opportunity. We knew the law is gone and we ain't gonna worry about it no more. You're not gonna worry about what? We ain't worrying about Vietnam. If you went over there, you went on your own. See, we give respect to the government 100%. While yeah. we know what the government is doing for the people out here. See, we are 5% of poor righteous teachers. See, we know everything. See, we respect the government at all costs. While we are backing him up. But we know he's doing his job. While we out here to do a job also. Right. That's why we're here. What do, you, what do you think about the job they're doing, the government? The government, the government is doing everything right and exact. That's the way it's supposed to be. The government has always been right and exact. They doing their job and we doing ours. The five percent is going to do their job in the poor part of the planet. This government that we're supposed to go up underneath to show and prove that Allah is God, always has been, and always will be. Then regardless of who do what, we really don't give a damn what people think about us. When we started, the first people we walked away from was our mothers. <laughs> That's the first people we walked away from. Because we weren't no mama's boys. And when we came home and said, Mom, put the swine down, and we said it enough until we got frustrated and threw the pig out the window, they threw us out the house. And we didn't have nowhere to go. We slept on rooftops. And as far as our law go, he taught us that when a man go to one church and a woman go to another, there will be conflict in the house. Mm -hmm. And your grandmother had the police escort him out the house. And that's when he was living in the basement on the corner. We know that. How we know that? Because he told us. See, we're going to be building. We're going to build a black nation that's going to be all wise and righteous. And See, little old big. That's right. But see, we got our own rules and regulations, and we know that God is a lie, and he is black. Why aren't you marching today? Why? Because we march for what? We don't need to march. We know who God is, and the lie going to take care of it all. That's why his son's out here now. You see three we of us standing here. We don't protest, you know. We it's respect three of us right government. here. We respect the government. We don't go through walking through the streets and protesting. The people want to do something, just go down there one at a time and tell the government what they want to do. The government is right in this act. They know what they do. Many y'all, how many people here registered to vote? Hmm. Uh, yeah. I heard it. Somebody said, I don't vote. Yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? <laughs> you see you hear what I'm saying? How the hell you want to change the system unless you participate in it? Respect the government at all costs while we are backing them up. But we know he's doing his job. Well, we are. When you come to his court and you start talking about your righteous name and your honorable name, the judge do this. Look over his glasses at you. That's called recognition. Then he asks you, what are you doing in my court? You have shown and proved that you are an honorable man, a righteous man. So then if you're a righteous and honorable man, what the hell are you doing in my court? Why are you breaking your law? Mm. You see, this is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. I sure do. Well, I see Allah is the God. He told us to respect the government 100% and do anything the government asks. Well, I see, we know we're going to do for the government. See, the government got to speak to us while we're the high intelligent people of this planet is. See, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he's the last and greatest apostle of Almighty God Allah. Right. See, he already submitted. 100 percent he's the holy muslim what do you feel were the reasons that he left the temple because well it's not my perspective it's what i was told by the captain of the foi the captain of the foi told me because we were questioning what clarence was doing because one particular time when malcolm was uh, uh, actually set down he was set down after February the 21st, 1964. And we got a, a report about Clarence on 125th Street selling all of his back papers and he was not in the mosque. So I asked the captain and the captain told me that uh, he had another incident with uh, his wife. Her name is uh, Dora. Dora and him had an incident and the captain said I had to dismiss it. This is what Captain Shaw told me that I repeated over and over again in my talks on the 5% and it was his second incident which meant that he got more time than the first time. Now, if you interview and your other grandmother people, had the police escort him out the house. And that's when he was living in the basement on the corner. We know that. How we know that? Because he told us. That's my brother. 
How do you feel about the demonstration? How I feel about it. Didn't you hear me speak? Ain't no difference. We all is one. The lessons given to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad at that time were for the internal use. And we felt that these were, it's like in the Masonic order, these were our internal business and it's not shared with the general public in such way and that he was violating things in the nation. And brothers and sisters had a problem with what he was doing, there's no doubt about it. And then he was giving it to uh, children, very young children, who didn't have a level of understanding about the lessons. And if you don't have that level of understanding, then it could cause you to do things by what is written in those lessons that may not be you know, proper. And so we had a problem with it because there was nobody to explain. And we didn't know how deep um, Clarence 13X's knowledge of the lesson was about a nation of Islam follower who went berserk and stabbed a man to death on a makeshift altar in his home. The man who committed the murder, his name was Robert Harris. His Muslim name was Robert Kareem. A book written by Master Farad Muhammad titled The Secret Rituals of the Lost Found Nation of Islam instructed all believers of the cult to stab people to death in order to gain religious rewards. Obviously. To do the God of law, I go in the army and show him proof and come back home in no limit of time. The same way I went in there. Are you a draft age now? No, sir. Are you the officer? Yes, sir. Have you been called? No, sir. Well, I yes. spoke to the government while the government told me to lay cool for a while. You got a deferment? Yes, sir. Are you trying to get other black youths to not go into the army? Are you no, I'm not stopping the I'm not stopping them. Make him that he let, he, he let the people know that their life was worth more than property. All material things. And you think that this has been the big difference in New York? Yes. See, everyone is independent. Right. This year here is independent year. If they don't know they're independent, why they got to go out in the street and go by themselves? Ain't no one going to help them. The simple reason, if you go to school, you're going to learn something. And if you go to work, you're going to learn even more. You're going to learn about unions. You're going to learn about systems. You're going to learn about this government that we're supposed to go up underneath to show and prove that Allah is God, always has been, and always will be. And we felt that these were, it's like in the Masonic order, these were our internal business, and it's not shared with the general public in such a way, and that he was violating things in the nation. And brothers and sisters had a problem with what he was doing, there's no doubt about it. And then he was giving it to uh, children, very young children, who didn't have a level of understanding about the lessons. And if you don't have that level of understanding... See, we know everything. See, we... When Harris was arrested, he told the police that he made a sacrificial murder to please his God, Master Farad. Harris was quickly declared insane and put in a straitjacket. There was a time while he was incarcerated, the other five percenters taught more young brothers and sisters. So when he came home, there was, you know, hundreds of five percenters, mm -hmm. they say. And uh, they talk about how he established the Universal Parliament in April of 1967. It was the first of its kind when the brothers went to Mount Mars Park in Harlem, now known as Marcus Garvey Park. And uh, the father, uh, La, Clarence 13X, had a universal parliament in which he had all these five percent heard about. There was a Muslim or a group of Muslims who approached the father and they had a debate between mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. And of course, in my research, I found out that you're the very said individual that was there at the first universal parliament that was a representative of the FOI. And, uh, one Sunday, Minister Farrakhan, at that time, we were meeting in the Bronx. And he knew that I had always been an assistant minister under Malcolm when he first came to New York, and I was working with him at first. And so the minister asked me, would you open up for me today in the Bronx? I want, I want to get you back on the roster. And I said, of course, Brother Minister. So I put on my FOI uniform. I came to the restaurant to make sure everything was straight and up to the park. And I walked up to the hill. At the top of the hill, I saw what I, it may have been five or 600, but I said it looked like a thousand people, young people. And when I walked up in the FOI uniform, the young people opened up a path and there was uh, Clarence. And um, 
I said, I gave him the greetings. He had a baby in his arm and a cigarette in one hand. And uh, the first thing I said to him is, you know, so Clarence, I mean, how are you teaching these young brothers that you are Allah? And you're standing there with a cigarette in your hand. And uh, he said to me that uh, Allah is not bound, fixed by anything. Allah must master all things. And the whole crowd said, oh, praise is due to Allah. He went on to say to me that I am the one. I've been shot with an elephant gun through the heart, and I live, you know. And uh, they said, oh, praise is due to Allah. Then I told him, I said, well, Clarence, time is a test of all men and all ideas, and time will tell who you are. And uh, they opened up. We may have had a few other words. Right now, I can't recall, but they opened up a path, I turned, and I left. This kind of thing going on, where someone leaves an organization, forms something uh, away from that organization that is really against the principles of that organization, and he was one, you always have this. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. so at that parliament, I think that, uh, and shortly after that, he's killed, and I'm the one that said that one of the young brothers in the crowd may have wanted to show and prove that he was really a lot. I don't know what the police said who did it and so forth, but that's what happened on that particular day. And, uh, and right after that, I'm working in the streets of Harlem and I would see him. I would see him with a cigarette. I would see him shooting crap around 132nd Street and 8th Avenue and, and that's where his little home area was. Um, he would be out there shooting craps and I would see him at a, a um, he would be out there shooting craps and I would see him at a, a, a store. That he would wave to me or I'd say salam alaikum and we'd go on but we never got into a debate right. in the streets that we went back and forth over what he was doing and he knew that I disapproved because I felt that I said Clarence what you're doing with these young boys is not correct. And when I would go to the prisons and I would see those same young boys that I knew as children that would come up to me and remind me, I lived on 118th Street. I was the brother on 100 that used to come to you and talk to you about the lesson. And most of them were in there because they had gotten busted with heroin or selling heroin or using it, whatever it is that they were in jail. So that disturbed me because Clarence, if he was in the street and he was going to do the good that he could by using the lessons, then he should have also used the principles that he learned inside of the nation of Islam of disciplining yourself from those kind of things. Regardless of who do what, we really don't give a damn what people think about us. <laughs> when we started, the first people we walked away from was our mothers. <laughs> And we said it enough until we got frustrated and threw the pig out the window. <laughs> they threw us out the house. How do you feel about the demonstration, sir? How do I feel about it? Yeah. What do you mean, how do I feel about it? Well, are you in favor of demonstrating against the war in Vietnam? I'll tell you what I'm not in favor of. I'm not in favor of cleaning up another country when this is filthy. That's right. You dig that? Right. What, what this cranker has learned is clean home first. Don't worry about Vietnam. You can't, you can't guarantee freedom to the people millions of miles away when you got crap going on right here in the, in the neighborhood. You are the original people. So what you do in my court? These are your laws. The people make the laws. When I would go to the prisons and I would see those same young boys that I knew as children that would come up to me and remind me, I lived on 118th Street. I was the brother on 100 that used to come to you and talk to you about the lesson. And most of them were in there because they had gotten busted with heroin or selling heroin or using it, whatever. Stop and frisk. Mama, stop and frisk. Mm -hmm. Is not about the police. Right. Mm -hmm. How you think that got stopped? How you think they, they changed the law? The people. People's not simple. 
It's simple. It is so simple, and it was simple.